Welcome to the Manufacturing Masters Podcast with your host, Allison DeFord. Are you one of those people who is already active on LinkedIn and using it to grow your business in a sustainable way? No? <laughs> Excellent. You're in the right place. Today's episode will motivate you to do just that. I am so honored to have two of my very good buddies joining me today, Damon Pistolka from Exit Your Way and Kurt Anderson from B2Btail.com. These guys are e-commerce for manufacturing experts. Damon is an expert on the Manufacturing Masters platform along with me, and these two are rocking LinkedIn. And they are going to tell you how to leverage it to grow your business. You are not going to want to miss this episode. I cannot tell you how many ideas come up in this episode. You're going to need a pen and paper. So grab it now. And I'm just going to say ahead of time, you're welcome. These two will help change your business by leveraging the power of LinkedIn. Everybody, here we grow. So uh, I feel like these two should really be leading this episode. Um, and I am a mere, I'm not worthy. Uh, Damon and Kurt, thank you so much for showing up with me, for spending some time. You guys are super busy. What's happening? See, Hanging with you. Been, man, <laughs> it's such an honor, such a privilege to be here and just, you know, our love, our respect, our admiration for you off the charts, what you've done with Manufacturing Masters is just mm -hmm. incredible. So it's just a privilege for Damon and I to be here. Damon, what do you think? I'm with you. Just happy that we can be here. It's, it's a lot of fun. Well, it's fun just hanging out with you. Uh, and, and you know, from Kurt and I's standpoint, I think we're just happy to be able to do what we get to do every week. It's just a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. You guys have a lot of fun, but you also bring so much value. And that's why I invited you on this episode, because I think there's no one better to share with manufacturers the power of leveraging LinkedIn to grow their business. You two are living proof. And that is where I met both of you. I've We've never met in person, which is insane to me because- Pretty I feel like, you know, you're my brothers from another mother and, and I look forward to meeting up with you soon and giving you a big fat mm -hmm. hug. But I mean, think about that, the power of friendship and collaboration that has happened digitally. Like I, I would give a lung for you guys. Like that's, you know, people yeah. I've never met, but think that highly of, you know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. Yeah. So, and oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. It was well, no, and it was it was cool. Like, there's a lot of things I want to cover because you two are busy doing a lot on LinkedIn. So, but before we jump in, you're also both very good at your own because you you're the kings of collaboration, which we're definitely going to talk about that. But you also do your own separate. You have separate businesses. You have you do separate posts that are very I feel personal and motivating. So just today. Kurt put up today is national see the light in others day. And I feel like this is really um, just the perfect, I don't know, the perfect thing to kick this off because both of you are incredibly good at seeing the light in others and, and shining a light on others. And it's just, it's selfless and you do it repeatedly day after day, year after year. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, sometimes I don't know where you get the energy, but you just keep bringing it. So I appreciate that in you guys. Well, thank you so much. Damon, I'll kick it off and you, you, I'll, I'll, I'll bet first, you bet second, you know, so he, Damon, he, you know, he was needs to move over the rudder, you know, so that's why he's a great second batter, you know, so... <laughs> What an honor, privilege, Allison. And again, like, you know, you and I are just what a wonderful LinkedIn success story. Uh, you know, you put out a post, the infamous, famous, funniest post of all time. It's a Hall of Fame post. 
<laughs> I felt I don't know he was in love with you on that first post. And we and we never spoke, you know, we didn't speak for months. I think yeah. we nurtured like just kind of a distant relationship. And I'm like, man, I need to get to know this person. And then finally COVID hit and, you know, you and I became fast friends. And I just think, you know, uh, Zig Ziglar, I believe, and I'm going to butcher his quote, said, the more you dedicate, you know, helping others achieve their goals is how you're going to help achieve your goals. I wish I would have understood that in my 20s or 30s. I'm not a young guy anymore, but yep. just being that goal giver and just relentlessly uh, collaborating and, you know, LinkedIn is the perfect place to do it. Damon, that's how you and I became fast friends, but take it from there, your thoughts on collaboration and what LinkedIn's done for you and your business. Well, it's 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 allowed us, I knew there was something better than going to every single networking event I could in the Seattle area and still being frustrated with not meeting enough, I shouldn't say enough, meeting with really cool people that I wanted to work with more. Mm -hmm. um, and I met some good ones, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, you look at where we live and it's limiting, it's limiting where we live. But what you can do with LinkedIn is so cool because Kurt lives in New York. Yeah. I live in Seattle. Yeah. We would have never met walking down the street somewhere. We would have never met at a trade show. We would have never met, you know, you just keep going to live where we went. What we did meet is we, we saw, I saw a post from this crazy dude and, and I was like, that dude is probably my kind of crazy. <laughs> and, and it was. And, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's just blossomed from there, but take that kind of thing and multiply it by a whole bunch. And that's what LinkedIn is. Yep. Well, and I want to talk for a sec because I think the last statistic, and, and so I could be butchering this. So you guys back me up or correct me. The last statistic I saw was quite a while ago. And it said that, you know, 5% of the people are the ones creating a hundred percent of the content on LinkedIn. Yeah. Five makes me think handful, small, tiny handful. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I think a lot of people think, well, what do I have to contribute? You know, mm -hmm. what, what we're just a manufacturer of, you know, fill in the blank, Shamalama, whatever aerospace parts, like there's other people doing it. I don't know that we really have anything to contribute. And I think that statistic alone has fueled my fire because whenever I sit back and think, I don't know, I don't know if I have anything to bring this week. I don't know if what I, what I want to bring has any value. The thing that I've learned is this is a, um, God, I feel like you guys will say this so much better. It, this is a huge stage and there are only this many people, right? Creating content. So be one of the handful. Like why not take advantage of that? Well, I'll, I'll tell you the, uh, you know, Allison, so you and I connected, like it was like probably 2018, 19, whenever it mm -hmm. was. And I, Allison, I did like, you're in LA, Damon's in Seattle. I'm in the middle of nowhere in New York. Did you, did you guys hear about like there was a pandemic thing like this? This did you guys hear about that? Did it come out, Damon? COVID? Did you hear about that? I heard thing? a little something about it. A little it. bit, yeah. So yeah. you know, this little COVID thing hit, came and shut down the world, completely shut down the world. Allison, you and I became fast friends, and like you know, we're digging, clawing. You know, what are we doing with our businesses? What are we doing with our families? What are we doing? We're stuck inside all this stuff. And you landed a client. And you, I, I vividly remember, I'm a, I'm a figure skating dad. I was at the skating rink watching my daughter and you called me and you're like, dude, we just closed the client. And it was like, it was a week before Christmas, if I'm not mistaken, of whatever year that, that was. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I had no idea when the next piece of business was coming my way. What does 20, you know, the next year look like? And because of our LinkedIn friendship and relationship, you know, like I am eternally grateful to you. What a great celebration. And what a privilege to work with you side by side and this incredible company. And this is a line that you use. And I, I steal so much of your content, shamelessly, just blatantly steal it. I'm not even saying I borrow okay. it. Steal it. Steal away. And you use a line, this one client that we worked with, and I won't see any names, was whispering. 
They had this amazing, incredible product and they're whispering. And so many manufacturers are doing exactly what you describe is they're whispering. So I'm sharing that story for multiple reasons. Number one, if I don't have the, the you know, you don't put out this hysterical post that I think was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I don't resonate and connect with you. And now we build a friendship relationship. We build trust. And now we have a, a that night, no light trust that our friend Greg Mishu always uses, right? Yep. And now you have a, a wonderful project that you, I helped you with a proposal. We land a deal, worked on it together, and we built friendships with that client that will go on forever. And it was just such a win. Okay. Number one. Number two, they were struggling with their content. And how many people are whispering and just not having the guts and courage just to raise their hand or put them, themselves out there when they have so much to offer? Damon, you see this on a regular, consistent basis. And you love sharing how like you were that guy. You weren't sharing any content, but you've gone through, it's not a revolution. You've gone through a LinkedIn evolution mm -hmm. and look what you're doing today. But what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I forgot the question, but <laughs> I'll take the last th th 10 seconds of that. I think that the the manufacturers that are not taking the opportunity back to and now I'm my brain is coming back yeah, into the, the, like the out of the fuck yeah the five percent yeah the five percent yeah, right. right just look at any other platform look at Instagram look at TikTok look at any of these ones because you know if you're younger you're gonna look at those and you're gonna look at Facebook and you're gonna whatever one you look at now look at where your buyers are where your buyers are, where they're spending time when they are working, when they are thinking professional, where are they at? It's on LinkedIn probably for most manufacturers. Yep. So then you're sitting there, if I'm a B2B manufacturer and I'm I'm making a blah, 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 that's really nice and technical that it's, I, I sell to engineers or purchasing people that are really, they got this special need. <laughs> where the heck is a better place for you to start talking about the the you know what some around it educating people on how to select the best how to you know whatever just educating your industry because you're one of that five percent there's 900 million people on linkedin 900 million and that's just like you know you can as a manufacturer you can write a good post if you're a, an individual your business page won't get as much traction but as an individual you can write posts and mix in something about your business, something about life, something about it. You can get hundreds of thousands of views on your content. You can't do it. You can't pay to get that on a Facebook without spending tens of thousands of dollars. Exactly. It's, it's just a, it's a gold mine and you're reaching right into the pocket. And that's not a good way to say it right into the minds right. of the people that you want to be yeah. talking with. Yeah. Right. Well, and what do you say to the manufacturers <clears throat> who say that that all sounds great? I think you're right. Dude, I don't have time. Yeah. I don't have time to spend on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I'm busy running my business. You know, we're a we're we have tw I have 25 employees, so we're not huge. Um what do you say to that to that person? Yeah, we just, we had a great, little, so we do our jam sessions, little AKA webinars. Elson, you've been on and is a wonderful panelist. We just did one last week and it was social sell selling strategies for manufacturers. And we had a young woman, Haley out of Michigan with IQ Manufacturing. And she shared that exact thing and like how she started from zero and mm -hmm. just started posting and started posting and started posting and started posting. Now they're 20, 25 employees. They have the luxury where the owner is committed to marketing. Therefore, he is a marketing person on staff. Okay. Excellent. For that business owner, totally get it, respect it. We're like, hey, if you're the engineer, you're the brilliant operation person, or you're putting out 20 other fires, totally get it. If you're not the business development person, you need to have a business development person on staff if, that, if that's not you. Okay. Yeah. If it is you, and I, and even if it's not you, as the president of the company, Boy, I encourage you to treat this like the gym. And Damon, we were talking about that book, Atomic Habits, the other day. You know, like if I need to lose X number of pounds or whatever, like, in, you know, I want to try to do it overnight. It's daunting. It's overwhelming. I don't know where to start. But if I could just take like, hey, you know, Damon, you gave a great example. I'm just going to drive to the gym and just see what that commute looks like. 
I'm never going to walk into the gym. Right. Then the next day, I'm just going to walk up to the window in the gym and just kind of like, you know, what does it look like? Then the next day, maybe I'll walk inside, just kind of like see what the machines look like. As I, you know, these are my kind of folks. Could I work out here? And just do it one step at a time. Treat your, this journey, like Allison's hit it right on the head. 5% of people, like I'm no math major. Yeah. All that, like you always talk about smelling opportunity, right? You smelling success, Allison? Like massive opportunity. If you just took 10 minutes a day, one hour a week, and you just started that exactly. new atomic habit. And what I was, I'll share this and hand it over to you, Daniel. It's not adding more to your plate. If you're, if you are the business owner and you are frustrated that you're not seeing new business, here's the ticket. There's something on your plate. That's a profit killer or a time waster. Take something off of your plate. So good. And then add LinkedIn onto it. Damon, take it from there, really. 100%. You got other junk you need to stop doing because yeah. there's stuff that you're doing that isn't adding value to their business and your business development, your marketing, meeting other people. That's what we're talking about doing, meeting other people. If you are the owner, a salesperson, anyone that cares about growing a business, you're not meeting people, you're not doing your job and you have to allocate time to meet other people and collaborate on things because it's it's essential. If you're not, someone down the street from you probably is, and before you know it, your growth is gonna slow and there will speed up. And the next thing you know, you're gonna be wondering, why am I not growing like I want? Yep. That's simple. Absolutely. Well, <clears throat> I wanna talk briefly about because you guys have spanned the gamut of you do your own personal posts, motivational, not necessarily about business. It's just motivational. You comment. We also know commenting thoughtfully on other people's posts is very powerful to grow your network. Um, even if somebody spent five minutes a day just reading what other folks are saying and and you know try to connect with um grow your community of like people right the people that you're trying to like i have very thoughtfully crafted the community that i am engaged with on linkedin and i've done it over the last eight to ten years and so am I connected with 50,000 people? No, I'm not because I've been very, very thoughtful about it. Um, so I think that's an important thing to, um, yeah, is, is be where they are. So see what they're talking about and comment. And then the other thing that you guys do is you do posts for your businesses right? Because you have different businesses, but then you do all these collaborations. And I feel like you two are the kings of collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I feel like manufacturers could take advantage of this as well. You know, who could they maybe collaborate with, partner with, do a podcast with, or come do a LinkedIn live. That's mm -hmm. the other thing where you two, I think have so much experience um, and way more than I do about LinkedIn lives, YouTube live, so let's let's focus on the lives for a minute because yeah. everybody pretty much knows about posting and you know yeah. I feel like it's a practice. You might say I'm not very good at it. It's just by doing it you get better, right? What about the lives? What what have those done for you yeah. and your businesses and how could manufacturers take advantage of this? Well, a few things unpack and, and first off, I guess you know when people catch this uh, wonderful podcast at Manufacturing Masters all they have to do, Allison, is just look over your shoulders, right? And yep. I see our mutual friend, Sam. I see Chris Harrington. I see Ray Zagano. Yep. I see Megan Zimba. Yep. I see all these people over your shoulder. So like you are completely, and I thank you for the compliment. You're the queen of collaboration. And I'm just mm -hmm. seeing all these pieces right behind you of exactly doing what you're saying, right? And I see your comments. I'm like, Megan, way to go, girl. You're rocking it. Or Ray, you know, my partner in crime with my podcast for, for many years, you know, so- you're the queen. And so, you know, just to hit that point real quick is 
being thoughtful and Damon, I don't know how you do it, dude, is like, you know, dropping comments on other I don't people, either. other individuals' celebrations, their comments, their value props, their, their, their challenges. We have friends that, you know, it's not yeah. always, you know, rosy, you know, like Facebook, yeah. like, I don't mean, yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody's yeah. rosy, like people post, you know, like, man, I kind of have a, a lovely day today. Right. So, you know, creating that engagement, that authenticity, I know a lot of that might sound cliche, but being the posting on other folks engagement is absolutely critical to help build those reports. Collaboration, as you said, uh, Allison, just as I'm talking about what you've done with uh, Darren Mitchell at Manufacturing Masters is just textbook. Okay. The live streams, the question is, what have live streams done for us? Completely changed my life. Completely changed my life in ways that I never dreamt, never imagined. The relationship that I've built with Damon, I have been to Damon's house. I've been, we've got, I've, I've, you know, I was there a year ago today. I yep. was at Damon's house. A year ago today, I spent Halloween with Damon and his wife. We went out, had a wonderful, just magical time. We went to a Seahawks game without LinkedIn, without this show. Those opportunities would never happen. Damon and I went to uh, Alaska this year. We did workshops in Alaska. So we've met multiple times. So that alone, and we've, 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 we produce revenue together. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, we have separate companies, but we've produced revenue together. Allison, we've produced revenue together. Okay. Mm -hmm. The live streams, what they do, and and I will uh, go super deep and I could go on for, our, our, you know, forever. It is our business development. It's yes. the opportunity to find amazing people. Shamelessly, I find well, probably there's a hundred benefits to the live stream. The one, I get free coaching sessions twice a week, every week from some of the smartest people that I've ever yep. met. Yes. You know, Harry Smith from Big Ass Fans are like, we're yes. all, like fan fan kids of the Big Ass Fan, you know, uh, Scott Amlianic, the editor-in-chief from Inc. Magazine. Nicole and I were in New York City three weeks ago. We He took us a breakfast. Like, how on earth could we have ever had yeah. breakfast? And then, Damon, I'll hand it off to you on this. The collaboration piece, Elsa, what you talk about, this past Friday and a month ago, we did two live streams. This is what we did. We brought in different manufacturers that had different challenges onto the live stream show to talk about those challenges and how they could collaborate. So Friday, we had a dog treat manufacturer. We had a, in Indianapolis, we had a culvert manufacturer in Buffalo. And then we had a, a power pedestal manufacturer in Chicago celebrating manufacturing month. And all three of them talking about how amazing Made in USA in manufacturing in the United States. Is, and it was just amazing, mind blowing. We did another one last month where it was a CNC uh, metal manufacturer that has an electronic component to their business. We brought in the electrical safety expert and did a live stream with those two together. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on, but the collaboration opportunities are purely endless. Damon, take it from there, dude. Well, you talk about that, and that, those are just great examples, right? And and as a manufacturer, those collaborations can be with companies that are doing similar things or complementary things to you around the U.S. Like that are the, the part. You just work together because those opportunities and what it what it does, Kurt, and you, uh, you and I, we don't. I don't think we we don't think the way that some other marketers would think and we're trying to promote ourselves. I mean, yeah. because if you, and I, I don't, I don't want to sound like, I don't want to like, Kurt and I just like to have fun. Right. And, and highlighting other people is a lot of fun. And I think the collaborate, when you go into collaboration like that is like Kurt said, I want to meet really smart people because I yeah. get free coaching or I get, you know, I'm going to learn more about this, right? So if I'm a manufacturer today and I'm making this assembly and it goes into some other assembly, well, talk to somebody that's making the other part of the assembly to really learn about that because it'll make my product better. Yes. And the two of us will learn more about this. And then when somebody else needs something like I do or they do, who are they going to think about? It's, it's that simple. Mm -hmm. You don't, I mean, Kurt and I just, we just have fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, really. I, I'm just, I'm so blessed every day that we have people that show up on our shows that yeah. that want to talk that are smart as heck and we just we can just allow that. But over time, you doing this, think of all the people that you get to meet, all yes. the people that are going to call you maybe when they're right. thinking about something. Maybe it's something you do. Maybe it's something you can help them with. It's mm -hmm. it's just 
the the communities that you can build are incredible yeah. and the relationships you can forge are are priceless not not just for business you know business is cool and everything but for life Absolutely. Just and share this real quick, Allison. So, you know, we love preaching. Uh, three of us work closely with the MEPs. Yes. Your main, you know, odds are your manufacturer if you're watching this. And so the MEP is the Manufacturing Extension Partnership, MEP. There's an MEP in all 50 states. There's one near you, and they are there to help manufacturers. That's their sole purpose in life. <clears throat> and so, just a great organization. We interview and we work relentlessly on helping elevate the MEP network. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a best friend of mine who has nothing to do with anything that we do. I talked to him yesterday and he was like, he was talking about like he catches our live stream show all the time. And like, he's talking to me about the MEPs. I'm like, like he's a school teacher. And I'm like, dude, how do you know the MEPs? He's like, I watch your live show. So the MEPs are just a great resource, a great ally for us. We love elevating them. It's a big yep. portion of our business. I went to the, uh, so here's a great takeaway. The annual MEP conference was held a month ago. Mm-hmm. Guess who gave the keynote speech? Wesley and Greer, who was in our network, and I connected with her through LinkedIn. Through LinkedIn, I connected with one of the MEPs, connected her with these folks, and they, she was, I, I couldn't, I was like a proud uncle. I could have been more proud, front row, just yep. loving her, hugging her, high fiving her. She's speaking to like four or 500 people as a keynote because of LinkedIn and because of this collaboration of her. I probably like walk around that conference. I probably knew seven, there were 600 people. I probably knew like, you know, a hundred of them because yeah. they've been on our live show or mm -hmm. you know, some way connected. So like, you don't, you know, anyway, I could go on and on, but it's just like what it does for you, how it can change and transform your business. It's hard to put a, it's hard to put a price tag on it. Well, and <clears throat> I think one thing that holds some people back, one, they say, I don't know how to do it. Dinner. So what I say to them is that one point in time, the three of us didn't know how to do any of this, right? I didn't know how to start yep. a podcast, yep. but then oh, no. I figured it out. You didn't know how to do lives and you stumbled your way through and you figured it out. Um, So that shouldn't be an excuse. Yep. Like just, sorry, that, that there is no excuse. You can learn. Number two, what do you say to people who say, well, you know, what if two people show up? What if I spend the time and I do these lives every week mm. and, and I collaborate with somebody else? What if like two people show up and then the next week it's five and then the next week it's one? Right. Should I keep going? Is it worth it? Uh, so they, guess what? We've had many occasions <laughs> where the one person shows up and you know what my response is every time? Damon taught me this three years ago. Whether it's one people or a hundred people, we're going to give this thing like there's a thousand people in the room. Yep. And I learned that from Damon Pistoka. And I'm like, and we, when we come into a, a thing, it can be deflating or it's like, oh, geez, you know, there's, you, you know, it's like planning a party. You've got all the, no the decorations and the food and you're all geared up and like one person shows up. It's very deflating, right? But Damon, we've had, you know, we've had many shows and many webinars and workshops, whatever. And one person shows up and gosh darn it, that one person is going to get everything that we've got to throw at them. Yeah. So yeah. back to the one, number two, uh, do you think, you know, who, who the biggest marketers of today, what, you know, whoever, you know, Gary Vee, whatever, do you think, you know, a ton of people showed up for their first, Simon Sinek, you know, you think a ton of people showed up for their first gig, you know? And the thing is, you hit it on the head earlier, Allison. If you're a, a manufacturer, you're making, you know, turbine engine, inje plastic injection parts for Boeing, you don't need 100 people in the room. You need the right person in the room. That's right. And you need that engineer yep. from Boeing in the room. And that's who you're speaking to. So yeah. it's it's consistency. You know, the Beatles, I'll lend that this statement, when the Beatles started, they probably played the three people in a bar somewhere at some point in time. They weren't filling Shea Stadium on their first gig. So, Damon, what do you think? What, what's your contribution here? You know, it's so funny that you talk about this, Allison, because it happens, it still happens today. I mean, we'll get, you can get some of my life that I might not get a comment even while it's going, you know. But you look and there's people, there's people watching there, and the right people do get to see your stuff over time. It's a building process. I went to a Zach Brown concert a few, you know, a couple months ago now. 
stellar performer. If you haven't seen Zach Brown, he liked country music. Oh my God. And he, he talked about it. He spent a lot of time talking about it. He said, you know, we went 10 years where we were playing. Everybody thinks we just started out famous. He said, we went 10 years. As Kurt said, we would play to 10 people, five people, no people. Yeah. And he said, and then all of a sudden when people see success, they think it's, it's, it's all of a sudden it's right. that work behind it that gets you there. You look at, as it, uh, um, Mark Schneider, isn't he the one that talks about cumulative advantage? I Mark forget. Schieffer. Mark Schaefer, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, there you go. I got got the wrong. Yeah, yeah, cumulative advantage. Yeah, because we were just talking about him the other day. And, you know, he talks about it. You have to get this momentum. It takes a while to get momentum. It takes a while to find your tribe. If you're doing a combination of I'm doing lives, but I'm talking to other people and I'm maybe talking to other people, mentioning my lives. Hey, show up if you want yeah. to, whatever. It's like you said, you're having a party, right? You will find people that like your party. And once you find people that like your party, they're probably going to come back more. Didn't. Exactly. Well, and the other thing you can do is you take advantage of recording the live. Then you can share the recording in six ways to Sunday across your social media and on your website and in an email. And this is the part of digital marketing, again, that most manufacturers that I meet, and I think you guys find the yep. same thing, they're not taking advantage of any of this. Yeah, the, but they could. We had a we we just had a client yeah. last week, and so uh, she's been on the show twice, Damon, and she was struggling. She exact you know intimidated. I don't know what to post. I don't know how to do LinkedIn, so on and so forth. We I grabbed the two previous lives, and I'm we have a the a woman that we were talking about earlier that we connected with your friend Beth, and mm -hmm. so we're 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 going through uh, these lives. Grabbing like just mic, you know, we always do our little fun mic track moments, I call them. We're grabbing all these mic track moments and these just golden nuggets that this this client, this manufacturer had laid on the live show, copy and pasted it. Amy, this woman on our team, she drops them in, she drops each post in the chat, rearranges the sentence in the chat GBT, rearranges the sentence. She created like two months worth of content from a live stream that she did for us back in December. And it's, it, it, I don't know if it took five minutes. Mm -hmm. She has two months of like p weekly posts now on LinkedIn from, from content that she already did 12, eight, 10 months ago. It, and she was thrilled. She was like, oh my God, that was a really good one. Oh, that's a really good one. That's fantastic. And she loved it. And so now she's happy getting that LinkedIn, just like that atomic habit, just yep. the first day at the gym, just get to the gym. Right. Yeah. And well, it's like super easy. It's yeah. super easy because your live stream, you transcribe it. So now I've got text for a blog post. You use the video. Now I've got video yeah. for my blog post. You're yeah. going to do a little summary of your video. I mean, all every every one I've ever done is, is a blog post on our website. I got like 500 blog posts on my website, and there's probably 20 of them that are written. The rest right. are all videos that we've done, and it doesn't take nearly as much work. Right. And when you look at what it can do, if you're a manufacturer and you specialize in something, do do like Lori Hybe talks about the lotus flower and you yeah. figure out what your topic is and do a whole bunch of stuff around your topic. Yep. If, if you do those lives on it, you just you just explode the popularity of your website by doing that. Yep, because it's all connected. And I mm -hmm. think you brought up Gary Vee um, earlier. If If you listening are not already following Gary Vaynerchuk, um, you're missing out because he is a master at all of this and has been for mm -hmm. quite some time. And this is somebody who started out working for his dad's business, uh, wine library and mm -hmm. totally took it, you know, exploded its value because he took it digital back when people were like, you, you want to do what a tweet yeah. They didn't understand, but his dad said, all right, go ahead. Yep. And the rest is history. So yep. But one thing he talks about that I've done, I don't know how many WTMFGs about, I've done social posts, I've done, he talks about turning one piece of content into 30 conversations. That's what we're talking about here. Don't just stop at the live, hand it off to somebody because you're busy, most likely. And I, I would venture to guess that you listening are not necessarily a video uh, pro as I am not either, 
to hand it off to somebody and say, here, can you chop this up for me and put it in all these places? And you've got, like you said, a month, two months worth of content and it's out there working for you while you're running your business or sleeping or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And that's in our mutual friend, Nicole Donnelly, she loves to call it that subject matter expert interview, right? So yeah. whether interview somebody internally on your team, your engineer, your owner, your production rock star, whoever it might be that can, you know, the, the goal is we want to stop being the best kept secret, right? And so people, you know, they drive Somebody by- wrote a book about that, just I, saying. I, it's my mom's favorite book, right? It's, <laughs> So Damon's got it there. right hey, here. Yeah. Dave's right here. And there's a quote in there from my dear friend Allison, by the way, and I love sharing that quote. I'm going to do it today. But, uh, <laughs> you know, what you want to do is interview that subject matter expert. And Damon, you know, you're talking about, Allison, you brought up collaboration. And Damon, you talked about like, hey, gee, who do I collaborate with? You know, like I have a microphone sitting here in front of me, right? And you talked about like, like if I'm the expert and I make this little rubber foot thing, well, you know what? I'd like to know the person that makes the lens. I want to know mm -hmm. the person that makes the screen. And if I could be the subject matter expert on like this little piece, but man, I'm going to be best friends with this person. And then I become best friends with this person because when this person, somebody reaches out, they're like, Hey, I'm doing a gig. I just, I'm making 10,000 of these and I need somebody that makes this. Well, guess who they're going to think of first. Right. Right. And so we call it like the lampshade, right? I've got a lamp right there. If you manufacture whatever your widget is, you manufacture that lampshade. Who manufactures the light bulbs? Who manufactures the, the the lampshade? Who manufactures the nightstand? Get that collaborative effort, man. It just like mm -hmm. really double down in that whole direction. So I don't know. There, there, there's a, we could go on so and many. on. So many. Allison. Yeah. And then, and now with that content, now you're sharing that company. As Damon said, you take the transcription, you have a little description of the live stream that you just did. I would link to that, you know, your friends and family of everybody that you, you know, that is in that interview with you. Mm -hmm. And now you're just nurturing and building those tighter relationships. Damon, any other takeaways? There's just so much opportunity to do this. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're making. Right. You, you just go, okay, I make refrigeration units for, you know, for retail stores. You could talk to the people that are doing the shelving. You could talk to the people that are doing the counters. You could talk. I mean, there's just, just so many things you can do. I don't care what you're making. You know, you can make car tires. You know, it, does, it doesn't matter. There's so many different collaboration opportunities for you to, to meet others in your industry that'll do it. Or also, and I, I concentrate on this a lot in our business, is I want to work with people that are beneficial, that, that I can help, but are also maybe one-to-many uh, relationship opportunities. You know, you really look at that because if you can, if you can do that somehow, you, you multiply your, your, uh, penetration across many different markets and there's just so much to do. You just got to open your mind. Think about it. Even right. competitors. That's the other one that I think yes. that most people don't do pull your competitors in and talk to them. Who cares? We just did it today. We yeah. just interviewed today. Nancy O'Leary in Chicago, love her. You know, we have some, uh, we have a little bit of a crossover with what we do. She's in Chicago yeah. and she's doing this amazing program called Manufacturing Mavericks. Allison, which you would absolutely love this and you mm. need to meet uh, Nancy. She's just, I can't speak high enough about her. They're doing, they're showcasing and featuring a Gen Zer that is pursuing and choosing a career in manufacturing. So every day for manufacturing month, they featured and highlighted a, a Gen Zer and it's right on her website. Oh, it's just it. a wonderful program oh, that they're super doing. Cool. And like, and, and she and I have a direct crossover on what we do. And I love Nancy. We spoke together on stage at the MEP conference last month. We've become super best friends, love her to death. And if I was like, oh, you know, gee, I, I can't, do, I would have totally missed out on an amazing friendship. Yeah. Well, there's plenty of business to go around. I think that's the misnomer is, right. and I feel the same way. There are other people, a handful in this space that help manufacturers with marketing that I feel like do a really excellent job. There's plenty of business for all of us. So Fine. for heaven's sake, I'm, yeah, reach out to your competitors and don't be afraid of them. And mm -hmm. don't be afraid of somebody, you know, stealing your secret sauce because but you have your own. And so you really don't have to worry about that. And and as we wrap up here, I I want to share with you listening, don't be afraid of 
you know, oh my God, I, I won't be Insta famous, right? Like you're not trying to amass mm-hmm. uh, 50,000 people to show up at your live event on LinkedIn. You're trying to connect with the people who will care, the people who will possibly want to buy what you're selling because of why you because of why you make it, uh, or who are connected with the person who will make that decision. And so, I think if that's one thing I've learned in 30 years of marketing and the long time I've spent on LinkedIn, and especially the last couple of years. It isn't about being insta famous. It's about helping somebody solve a problem, bringing value, sharing your expertise. And I love Damon's, um, I guess, motto. And it's it's if there's one person that shows up, by God, I'm going to give you a thousand percent of whatever I've got today because you showed up. And you matter. The end. Got to mom. Oh man. Well, I just love you too. And I, I want to, in wrapping up, is there any advice that you would give to a manufacturer who's like, all right, I hear what you guys are dishing. It makes sense. Where do I start? Like, where should I even start? You know, I'm going to make a little assumption that, you know, a lot of manufacturers are sports fans. Get off the sideline. Just get on the field. Just get on the field. You've got to throw a block. You're going to get your nose thrown in the dirt. You're going to get muddy. You're going to get dirty. You're going to get knocked over. Just get started. Get on the field. And I would encourage people to just give everything you've got. Just give it everything you've got. LinkedIn is free, yeah. doesn't cost you a penny. And you, when you see the manufacturers, we see it firsthand, Damon, the folks that go, you know, Haley last week, right? Yeah. Go all in. Damon, take it. What were your thoughts? You just got to do it, right? I, You know, Kurt and I look back and it doesn't even feel like we've done as many shows as we have. And you look back and you go, man, those first ones are pretty rough. <laughs> They're pretty rough. And it's just going to be, right? It's right. But we got to forget. We, they still we forget. <laughs> yeah, they still kind of do, but be yourself. Yep. Don't worry about being perfect, right? Don't go back and I don't think we've ever hardly ever in our life, Kurt, have we reached, we've never redone anything because it, it, that's the thing about live is you're live, right? They get to understand that I'm a goofy, you know, I'm going to do this and you're going to do all this stuff. Don't worry about perfection, be yourself yes. and, and then just do it, just do it. And, and we'll close on this and Damon, you know, you just hypothetically, right? Hypothetically, you can even like just call somebody and just say, "Hey, jump on a uh, on a yes. on a video call with us real quick," and you can actually be live at that yeah. time. I heard I heard that that's happened before. That happens. Once it in happens. A while, someone said it happens. It right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, and I have to tell you, I nearly shit my pants. <laughs> yeah, these two fools call text me. Hey, do you have time to jump on a call? And I thought, yeah, I do. Cool. It was the week so of Christmas. <laughs> they send me the Zoom link. I show up or whatever the hell it was. And they go, oh, by the way, we're live. And I went, we're what? <laughs> we're live on LinkedIn and YouTube. And yeah, I thought, yeah. oh, my God. I, I literally was freaked out. And inside my head, I took my own advice. And I said, just show up. <laughs> Don't worry about what you look like. No one cares. Don't worry that you don't know what you're going to say, it will come. And guess what? It was so much fun. It was- and now I have the great honor of kicking off your lives every January. She's our first guest every January. Yep. It's tradition. And I'll close it. And I, I know we could go on and on. <laughs> when you came on, I don't, it was, it was COVID was going through their second round and it was yep. the week of Christmas and yeah. Dave and I called you on. And I'm going to tell you, like, we had, we had a really deep, authentic, like, we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's going on. There's a second round of COVID. It's a little bit scary. And it was a very true, authentic conversation. And we just kind of put ourselves out there. Thank you for being a part of it, Allison. It was wonderful. Well, yeah. I love you guys. You're my brothers from another mother. 
Love you, and, Elston. Um, Thank you. For you, I, I I can't tell you how much your showing up means not just to me, but to a whole lot of people uh, on LinkedIn and in manufacturing. So. Thank you. Thank you for everything you. that you do. Thank and, you, you know, Great for you listening, if you're not already, I would hope that you would subscribe to this podcast. Uh, I would hope that you would follow Damon and Kurt on LinkedIn for sure and catch their lives. It's there's so much value and it costs you nothing but a little bit of time. Please. So um, please do that. And um, we'll wrap up and say, Everybody, we appreciate what you're doing. You're manufacturing. You're making a difference in this world. And um, we need you. So until next time. If you're not already, subscribe to the Manufacturing Masters podcast on Apple Music or Spotify. And for a deeper dive, head on over to manufacturing-masters.com. It's everything they never taught you in school.